Hello and welcome to Jim's EV Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to talk about something that I've talked about in the past, but we're going to go into a little bit more detail than I have before. We're going to talk about terms like recyclable, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. But what does that mean when it comes to cars? We're going to examine how much of your vehicle can be recycled over its lifetime. And more importantly, how much non-recyclable carbon is left behind at the end of 250,000 miles. We're going to do this for both the internal combustion engine vehicle and the electric vehicle. We'll also take a look at the everyday carbon footprint. That is the energy efficiency of the vehicle and the energy efficiency of the manufacturing processes used to make modern automobiles. And we'll talk about the government subsidies that are a part of your car, and that's the truth whether it's an electric vehicle or an internal combustion engine vehicle. So let's jump right in and see what happens when your car finally kicks the bucket. The truth is 95% of an electric vehicle's materials can be and actually are recycled. That includes the aluminum, the steel, the copper, and yes, even the battery. In fact, lithium ion batteries are not just recyclable, they're valuable. Companies like Redwood Materials and Lifecycle are already recovering lithium, nickel, and cobalt for reuse in new EV batteries. I'm going to provide a link to a couple of videos that show more about EV battery recycling in the description below, so be sure to watch those for a deeper understanding of EV battery life cycles. What about the gas-powered car, you may ask? Well, gas-powered vehicles are mostly metal. About 80 to 85 percent of the materials in an uh, internal combustion engine car will get recycled. But there's one thing that neither the EV or the internal combustion engine can recycle, and that's the fuel that they use. Every gallon of gasoline and diesel, every cubic foot of natural gas, every pound of coal that is burned is gone forever. And with it, we're pumping CO2 directly into the atmosphere. So let's take a look at the math for both the gasoline-powered car and the EV. Let's see what the true efficiency is for the fuels that go into those vehicles. A gas-powered car averaging 25 miles per gallon over 250,000 miles will burn 10,000 gallons of gasoline. Each gallon releases about 19.6 pounds of CO2 into the atmosphere. That's 98 tons of carbon that we'll never get back. But to understand that a bit better, let's look at how much volume 98 tons of liquid CO2 would encapsulate. First, we have to start with the 10,000 gallons of gasoline, and that will become about 20,000 gallons of CO2 should it be liquefied. That is a pool about twice the size of the one that's in my backyard. Each year, there are approximately 137.25 billion gallons of gasoline burned in the USA. That becomes about 274.5 billion gallons of CO2. In other words, enough to almost fill Skinny Atlas. That's one of the Finger Lakes in upstate New York. Also, that increases the overall parts per million of CO2 in our atmosphere by about 0.47 parts per million, which is about 25% of the overall increases we see worldwide every year brought about by human activities. Also, keep in mind that number increases every year as the population of the world grows and as other countries join the USA in their insatiable lust for burning carbon-based fuels. But there are countries that are ahead of the USA in ending their reliance on oil. But we'll discuss that more in just a few minutes. Now we're going to look at an EV. At 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, an EV will use about 64,103 kilowatt hours of electricity over 250,000 miles. And based on today's U.S. energy mix, that electricity produces about 0.85 pounds of CO2 per kilowatt hour. 
So even using the standard U.S. grid mix, the EV emits 72% less CO2 than the gas car. And that's without accounting for how the grid is getting greener and cleaner each and every year. So you see, just by switching to an EV, you can reduce your automobile's carbon footprint by 72%. That means it will take more than six years to fill Skinny Atlas instead of filling it up every year and a half as we do with gas cars. But there's even more good news. More renewable energy sources were added to the grid in 2024 than ever before in the history of the USA. That means the grid is truly getting greener. And if you charge your electric car using solar energy, you're adding zero to the CO2 pool. And just about now, I can hear somebody say, but wait, what about the energy used to build these cars? After all, manufacturing takes energy too. A typical gas-powered car requires about 10 to 12 megawatt hours of energy to produce, mostly from the steel, aluminum, and plastic manufacturing. The EV requires more, about 15 to 20 megawatt hours, largely because of the battery. Manufacturing lithium-ion batteries is energy intensive, but it's far more efficient today than it was 10 to 15 years ago. Back in 2010, producing a 60 kilowatt hour EV battery took about 72 to 126 megawatt hours. Today, that number has dropped to between nine and 12 megawatt hours. Battery production is getting cleaner and EVs offset their higher initial energy use after just a few thousand miles of driving. Oh, and by the way, the EVs that are manufactured in places like China use almost zero carbon fuels in the manufacturing process because China is greening up their grid faster than any other nation on Earth, ending their reliance on carbon-based fuels. Now let's talk money. Fueling a gas-powered car isn't just dirty, it's expensive. And the kicker is you never know the price of a gallon of gasoline because of the market volatility. But let's use 2024 numbers for comparison just to make it fair. A gas-powered car at $3.08 per gallon over 250,000 miles is going to use about $30,800 worth of gasoline. An EV over that same distance, $11,282. That's a savings of $19,518 just on energy cost. But wait, there's more. Let's factor in maintenance for the gas car that isn't needed for the EV. The gas car also needs 25 oil changes, three sets of spark plugs, and five air intake filters. This brings the total cost of a gas car to operate over 250,000 miles to $32,880, while the EV remains at $11,282. I'm not including tires, because both cars need tires. I'm not including brakes, because both cars need brakes, although the internal combustion engine car is going to need brakes three to four times as often. I'm just including the cost that it takes to keep the engine running and the fuel in the car. So the EV has an overall savings of $21,598 over 250,000 miles. And here's another kick in the head. An ICE car with over 250,000 miles has a better than 90% chance of needing a new engine. So 9 times out of 10, you will have the added expense of an engine replacement. The chances of a drive battery needing to be replaced in 250,000 miles on an EV? One chance in 10. If you're a risk taker, stick with the nine times out of 10 chance for or a major expense. If you know how to take care of your car, then you're gonna be better off with an EV every day of the week and twice on Sunday. The price of oil has been on a roller coaster, rising and falling unpredictably based on global conflicts, supply chain disruptions, and oil cartel decisions for years. In contrast, electricity prices have remained far more stable over the same period of time. Why is that, you might ask? Because electricity is produced domestically. The U.S. generates its power from domestic natural gas, domestic coal, domestic nuclear, and domestic renewable energy, 
Meanwhile, oil that we use in our automobiles is imported from foreign nations, many of which are OPEC members who can manipulate supply to drive up prices. And oh, by the way, we are currently locked in a tariff war with Canada. They're adding 10% to the cost of all oil shipped to the United States of America, and 60% of the oil that we refine comes from Canada. So I have one question for those who thought drill baby drill was going to solve the gas problem. How's that working out for you? In 2022, the U.S. imported about 8.5 million barrels of petroleum per day from 86 different countries. The top sources of U.S. crude oil imports were and still are Canada at 60%, Mexico at 10%, Saudi Arabia at 7%, Iraq at 4% and Colombia at 4%. That reliance on foreign oil doesn't just hurt our economy, it impacts our national security. Meanwhile, EVs run on electricity that's generated right here at home, insulating drivers from the global oil price shocks. And let's not forget to mention the fact that the good old USA spends between 80 and $120 billion per year protecting the OPEC oil shipping lanes. This is a freebie for those of you who enjoy the subsidy that you don't pay for at the pump. If you were actually paying for that protection on the shipping lanes, it would average out to about 17 cents per gallon. That is money that you don't have to pay, and that adds up to thousands of dollars in free money to each and every person who puts a gallon of gas in their car. You're welcome. So let's summarize what we've learned here. The cost for owning a gasoline-powered car should not impact your friends and neighbors and fellow citizens to the tune of more than $120 billion a year, but it does. The cost in terms of carbon dioxide is also measurable. The graph that you see on the screen right now are just the increases in CO2 levels that have occurred during my lifetime, and you can see that it's steady upward. It's palpable, and it's frightening to those of us who have an understanding of science, especially the science of the atmosphere. Recycling matters, but what matters even more is what can't be recycled. If you're serious about reducing waste and gaining energy independence for the USA, Switching to an EV is one of the biggest and best steps you can take because as you've seen already, most of the power that goes into my car is generated right here in the USA. In fact, all of the power that goes into this car is generated in the good old USA from good old USA materials. There's no foreign oil that goes into this vehicle. You cannot say that about the internal combustion engine. If you are as concerned about our nation as I am and you want to seek real in energy independence, I urge you to write your leaders, get involved in local environmental support groups, get involved in local EV clubs, stop driving your gasoline-powered car as much, combine trips where you can, and carpool if it's possible. And when it's time for a new car, at least consider an EV, and more importantly, Tell the government to back off. The government should not be taking an active role in shutting down any industry as they are trying to do with the EV. That's just shameful. And to borrow a phrase from our current president, building EVs in America will make America great again. Maintaining and improving the infrastructure to support the electric vehicle is just as important. It's essential for making progress, much like having solid ground to stand on, giving our nation a firm economic foundation on which to sustain our economy without the influence of foreign oil. The modern day assembly line used for manufacturing the automobile was invented right here in the USA. The automobile is as American as apple pie and baseball. We need to become the manufacturing leaders we were 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago in the automotive industry. And that automobile must be powered by renewable energy that is not susceptible to the whims of foreign powers who don't care about our way of life. Having our economy teetering on the edge of a carbon-based fuel, which we can't 
cannot control is dangerous and foolhardy. We need to push the EV and renewable energy as fast as we possibly can to keep from being blindsided by those who control our oil industry. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What can help us make the shift away from our dependence on foreign oil? Do you already drive an EV? Are you considering an EV? Do you encourage others to at least consider an EV when it's time for their new car? Again, put your comments below. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. If you know someone who's considering making the switch to an EV, share this video with them. And as always, I thank you for stopping by and I'll see you out there somewhere or along that route from point A to point B. Take it easy, everybody. I'll see you all real, real soon.